With so many new cream blushes coming out right now, I felt like two specific ones begged a comparison. I've got the Lawless Cream Blush. This is the new Pinch My Cheek Soft Blur Cream Blush. And I also have the new House Labs Color Fuse Glassy Blush Balm. Now I bought four of the Lawless and three of the House Labs. Those were just the shades that interested me, but there is a significant crossover and they're definitely worth comparing side by side. So I will have comparisons of the Mauve Persuasion, the Pink Persuasion, the very, very bright pink Persuasion. And then the standalone is the Coral in the Lawless Blush. And I will compare that to an another one in my collection that's quite relevant. Then we're going to go into overhead swatching where we're going to actually compare them against everything. Everything in my collection that's relevant. I get in the weeds, y'all. And today I'm just gonna take you with me. So by the end of this video, you will know far more than you ever wanted to about these two formulas. So let's go ahead and jump in. Okay, talking about half slabs first. So these are $34 and in that you get five grams of blush. It comes in eight shades. Again, I bought three. I really found the more nuanced shades, the kind of grungier colors to be more appealing, but then also I really couldn't resist that glassy lilac. Glassy tangelo was the closest to a coral that they had, but that's just a little too orange for me and that's why I didn't go for it. So the claims here are that it is a serum-based high pigment blush with more than 70% skincare and proprietary complexes that hydrate and make skin look plumper all in a long wearing glassy balm. I am really glad that they call out the fact that this is high pigment because the word glassy being in the title and used throughout all the descriptions of this product, at least to me, seemed to suggest that this is going to be somewhat translucent, easy to layer, easy to put on. It is in a stick format, which makes you think you could probably just put it straight on the skin. And that is just not the case. It is highly pigmented and I do find it a little bit intimidating to use because I don't feel like there is as much of an intuitive match between the amount of pigment that's in the product and the delivery system of the product itself. It's a stick. It shouldn't be a stick. The highlighted ingredients are very typical of House Labs. We have fermented arnica, which visibly reduces redness and irritation. Goji berry complex boosts radiance and makes skin look plumper. And fermented shiyunko promotes collagen synthesis and antioxidant protection. So they say that it's like skincare based. And a lot of times we talk about like, oh, I don't want skincare in my makeup kind of thing. But like, these are pretty benign. Now, one thing that I found to be incredibly interesting, and you'll see it in contrast between these two formulas, this is a wildly long ingredient list. There are so many things in this blush. When I first saw this release, my initial impression was this is a TikTok audience oriented product. It's gonna be super beginner friendly. It's gonna look good on 14 year old skin. It was a layup, but it is just a much more complex product than that. And I do feel like it is in that sense, a complete thought from House Labs. But again, expectations versus reality, that's all. Now, you'll see when we get into the swatches that this does have a glassy finish like they say, but in my experience using this product from first impression all the way till now, I have found that it's quite difficult to work with on top of powders, which is why I buy a glassy cream blush formula. I like to use the Patrick Ta method where you layer a more glassy, translucent, balmy blush on top of a powder and it'll bring the skin texture back. This has too much pigment for that. You're not gonna be able to get a glassy texture on the skin doing that because it lays down too much color all at once and it won't spread on top of a powder finish. That said, when I applied this with a sponge on top of no powder, just some complexion product, use the Prada foundation today, I got glassy from it. But my expectations were that this was going to be something that was going to be able to like operate in a lot of different like texture combination situations, and it just doesn't. All right, let's talk about the Lawless Pinch My Cheek Soft Blur Cream Blush. This one comes in six shades. Again, I was very interested in kind of the grungy ones, but once the shades were like fully released and I got to see all of the swatches, I found myself incredibly compelled also to try two of the brighter shades being gumdrop and starburst gumdrop is this like blue pink that feels very dior backstage rosy glow and all of its subsequent iterations everybody trying to impersonate that it's that neon kind of pinky purple blush right and i just had to know and then of course the coral was just very appealing to me you'll see that that's the one that i swatched against something else because house labs didn't have one that matched it so about this product a weightless creamy velvet textured talc free blush that delivers buildable color to cheeks and lips with a cloud-like texture and satin powder finish. It is also clean as Sephora, gluten-free, who knew? Vegan, cruelty-free, and the highlighted ingredients here are green tea extract, which re-energizes the skin and protects from free radicals. So again, we're talking about antioxidants. Hybrid elastomer microsphere powders provides a soft focus finish with a velvet soft cushiony feel. So that is not a skincare 
skincare ingredient that has a performance ingredient, and micronized pigments. Gives an extremely vibrant color with superior blendability and adherence. And I found that to be the main difference between these two products was that the application of the Lawless is just a little easier. I feel like the pigmentation is just a little bit more predictable. And I found that the best way to apply this was with a wet sponge, not even dragging the product, but to just lay it directly into the pan. It picks up the perfect amount of product and then it just pats really, really evenly onto the skin. This also has a very short ingredient list and it starts with dimethicone, shocking to absolutely no one. So the other obvious main difference here is the finish. So don't be underwhelmed when you see the side by side and you see that the Lawless is much more matte because that is by design. It's a and finish so that it can operate on top of powder or on top of cream or on top of nothing and it works on every skin type. Annie Lawless loves performance in her makeup and it comes through in this product as well. Now you might hear a little bit of bias in my tone between the two. And that is because my first impression of the House Labs was that I didn't really like it. Again, it was finicky, it was difficult to work with, but you'll see in the swatches, this is its ideal situation for application. And it did kind of give me a change of heart. Like I don't want to just chuck them. And they are now living kind of in my flash drive memory of colors that I want to use. But all that to say, they are not the easiest or most adaptable formula out there. Okay, so the first color profile is what I'm calling the mauve profile. And that is Lawless in Rosebud and the House Labs in Glassy Hibiscus. These are extraordinarily comparable colors. You do not need both of these. This is going to really fall down on the side of which finish you want and what the adaptability of it is that you need because if you need it to be glassy and you're willing to only work on top of cream products then the house labs is probably going to be right up your alley but i do think that the lawless especially because the colors are so similar i personally prefer the lawless i can always hit it with a mac fix plus or use a chanel bohm essentiel or something and get the shine back to my cheeks that's not difficult your cheeks are such like a smooth area of your face anyway it's a very easy place to achieve a more smooth texture after the fact. I don't need to have something be glassy right when it goes on at the cost of it being difficult to work with other products on my skin. Okay, the next color story that we're talking about, I'm just calling peachy pink, and that is the Lawless in Angel and the House Labs in Glassy Pomelo. These shades are more comparable than I expected them to be, but the Lawless is still a little bit cooler toned, a little bit less saturated. And for that reason, I think that you could have these and layer them. This isn't necessarily a case of either or. I will be wearing them as a pair, starting with the Lawless and then topping with the House Labs. All that to say, I do find that the House Labs kind of makes your makeup a little bit more translucent. That's why I recommend absolutely using it on a quite damp sponge because anything else is going to push your makeup around by the time you get it applied. I think that it is a little bit of a finicky product. Sometimes you have to babysit it a little bit and not everybody wants to put up with that. Whereas the Lawless, I feel like you could put it on with a hot dog bun. And finally, in terms of the ones we have to actually compare to one another between these two brands, we have that fluorescent pinky lilac color family. And that is in the form of Gumdrop from Lawless and Glassy Lilac from House Labs. I have to say, this was the one that I was the most excited about, especially from House Labs and it was also the one that I was the most crestfallen when I initially applied it because it ruined a face of makeup the first time that I used it. I was expecting, like I said, Patrick Ta level glassiness, that beautiful balm that's very translucent, goes on over makeup and just adds this gorgeous haze to it. It works well on top of these hybrid texture blushes from Lawless, but again, not on top of regular powder, so that was my big mistake there. The colors are sisters, not twins. They are very, very similar to one another, but lilac is more lilac and gumdrop is more pink. As for layering these, yes, you can do it. That's what I have on my face today. I wanted to see what it looked like, and I have to say, I had to chase the feeling down the rabbit hole in terms of creating a tonal look on my face because alone, it was a little much, like it was clashing with my bronzer, but I included a bunch of kind of cool toed things on my eyes. I still don't think that the eye look completely came together, but on my lips, I feel like we really did the job here. I pulled out an oldie but a goodie. This is the Gloss Lux in Love Lust. That's a tongue twister from Tom Ford, but the new Bobbi Brown Soft Lilac would work just as well. There's also one from REM Beauty that's beautiful in this lilac color, and you don't have to go and pay $70 for a Tom Ford lip gloss. You just don't. And here here is just the application footage of Starburst. Again, I didn't have anything to compare this to in the house labs. And so 
On the other side, I just applied the dibs stick that I got. You'll see it in the swatches as well. And I got that in the shade one. And I'm recording outside right now. So you get the birds, you get the garbage truck. Welcome to the ambiance of my life. But I absolutely love pretty much all shades in this family. But this one happens to be a little bit more kind of tomatoey orange and I am super into it. Alrighty, are y'all ready to get into the weeds? If not, you can skip ahead, but we are going to swatch all of these in an overhead view on my inner arm to see how these stack up to the other things in my collection that are relevant and worth comparing. So let's do it. I'm gonna swatch all of the kind of like mauve and pinks all next to each other because it's just kind of like such a fine line they all blur together. So I will start here with the two lawless ones and then I will do the two from House Labs. The lighter one here is Angel and then the more mauve one is Rosebud. Rosebud is more similar to the hibiscus shade there. You can see they're very very similar but obviously one is glassy because it's called glassy hibiscus. And then the glassy pomelo is the more similar one to Angel. And I have no idea kind of where the rest of them fall. So let's just jump in. Here are the new Westman Atelier shades. That's Coquette. Again, very, very similar to the pink profile. And Garcon is a mauve, but it is much less saturated and deeper. Just browner in general but such a beautiful color. But I would say that Coquette is kind of like right in the middle of these two. Yes, it's expensive, but like, I like it kind of the best of all. Someone did ask that I swatch the Patrick Ta, not too much, just the cream out of the duo. And that is this right here. So that's what we're doing. And I'm just gonna do that one this direction because you can't really tell which one it goes better with. You know, it's kind of right there in between. And that's why I decided to do them together because honestly, like couldn't really tell the two shades apart when I bought them from Lawless. And now I can tell them apart, but like still barely. Here we have Isabella from Thrive. This is gonna be far more in that kind of bright pink territory versus mauve. Then we have the Bosma actual mauve blush. I compare this formula very closely to the Patrick Talk Cream so it's like if you like this I highly recommend it if you're not wanting to buy the entire duo from Patrick Ta this works just as well and then we have my three shades from Finding Ferdinand these are my collection that came out in the winter the Opry Ski collection so it's just three different mauves this is sunrise this is high noon and this is dusk. So hopefully that gives you a sense of where each of these kind of falls in line with whether it's sort of the rosy color profile or the really like pinky color profile. But if I had to pick my formulas, my favorites are, I mean, obviously if you already have the ones from Finding Ferdinand, those are going to be my favorites. And I really think they cover the gamut, but I love the Westman Atelier formula. I do like the Lawless, but in this case, I feel like those colors are like almost just too similar to each other to make a difference, you know? And then I really enjoy the Bosma formula. And honestly, I'd never kick a Patrick Todd duo out of bed. Okay, this one should be relatively quick because there isn't that much in my collection that compares with these two from a cream standpoint. So I did actually pull out powders. This is the only one that I pulled out powders on because otherwise like you wouldn't see the most valid comparisons, which are the Dior blushes. So here's my lovely arm again. Here we have Gumdrop built up, you know, to a nice swatch there. And we have Lilac from House Labs. You can see much purpler. So here we have the two Dior rosy glow blushes in question, right? We have pink and we have lilac. There we go. I really had to like scrape my nail in there. The lilac is very blue, like a fluorescent purple. And then here is oh, oh, one pink. If I can get some of it freaking out of there for a swatch, a decent swatch. There we go. And you can see they're both kind of bluer in effect than either of these. So it doesn't really hit the full fluorescent mark in the same way that the Dior ones do, which surprises me, honestly. Then we have Butterflies from Kosas. Another comparable shade here. Yep. Is my finger glittery or is that glittery? That's quite shimmery. My goodness. Wow, that's so shimmery. I didn't realize how shimmery that particular shade is. My goodness. So there's that. It's right squarely in the middle. 
I mean, look at that. I really think you can like get the satisfaction out of just that blush for any of those, but at the same time, wow, she's shimmery, why? <laughs> then I have this kind of sleeper hit. I think this one's also shimmery, yes. So this is Maggie from Thrive in their Triple Threat Color Stick. Holy crap. But like, yeah, that gets the job done. That scratches the edge, doesn't it? has a gold shift on it. We have another one here that's got a shift on it. This is from Danessa Myricks. This is her Unbothered Yummy Skin Blurring Balm Powder Low Lighter. And it's very interesting to compare because it does still have that kind of like pink fluorescence, but in a very shiny kind of highlighter blush sort of way. This is just a funny family of products. And then we have my personal favorite, which is the Givenchy Prism Libre, which just has the most beautiful finish on the skin, the most vivid color payoff. Easy to work with, easy to pick up, just so much blur, so blurring. And it is still the one that I would always pick. Now out of the creams, I almost think that I would go mostly with the House Labs in this case, just because it's such an uncommon color, it's almost worth working with a finicky formula in that case. But if you ask me my favorite out of all of these, it would still be the Givenchy. And then for the love of God and all that is holy, we're having another coral blush death match. Let's just do this. <laughs> There are just so many. Okay, here is the Lawless. We do not have, thank God, a uh, comparison swatch from House Labs in this case. Next, we have the two corals that I love from Rare Beauty. We have Virtue, which is a much less saturated version. And then we have Joy, which is going to be the, you know, full saturation coral. And I would say that it's somewhere between, you know, it's got more white to it. So less gray, but it's not quite as bright and vivid as Joy. And it's certainly not as freaking pigmented as anything that you're going to get from Rare Beauty. All right, here is the new, whoa. <laughs> Armani liquid blush. I wish it read like that on the skin because it's so interesting looking. That is the shade 50.5, I don't know. It stays a little bit milky. It's just not as like vivid on the skin as that. I wish it was, but it's not. Then we have, oh yes, Charlotte Tilbury Peach Pop, one of the best things in the world. If you're looking for coral, girl, you're gonna get coral and it's the best formula, okay? And you don't hear me just rave about Charlotte Tilbury that often, but I, I just gotta hand it to her on those matte beauty blush wands. They're just phenomenal. Then we have this dibs stick that I just got, and that's that, this is the shade one. I would say that it's like ridiculously similar. It's the one that I swatched on my face next to the Lawless in the insert that you saw. It's very, very similar. I like the formula. I have heard, I'm not totally sure, but I have heard that it doesn't wear very long. So time will tell there. It is a new product to me. RMS, smile. If you want a vivid coral, girl, there's a neon coral for you, but you can see it's a lot pinker than the others, but it's like fluorescent and I love it. Then we have Bosma Peach. Ooh, ooh, it's so easy to wear. It really is, it's lovely. Then we have the Kaja Peach Cobbler Dewy Bar here. And while I love this in concept, it's so beautiful. It doesn't wear, it doesn't wear for crap. I just, it doesn't last at all. And then I'm going to go ahead and swatch again, like all three here of my Finding Ferdinand coral blushes. I think this is all three of them. I have just lab samples here, so I might have two of the same one. So there's Paloma Spritz and Aperitif, I think. I think I got all three of the color variations there, but you can see that like this back end is much more in like the true coral. Whereas if you look at the Lawless, like it's much more unabashedly orange. And I kind of love that about it. Okay, I changed clothes. I did. <laughs> this video has taken a long time to film. Final thoughts, y'all, on these releases in the context of everything else that exists, which that's literally my job description, right? Formula-wise, I think you can do better than the house labs. I also think they're expensive for what they are. They don't really like put themselves on for you. That's what I wanted them to do, especially because they call themselves like a serum-based, skincare-based thing, you know, that just happens to have color, but then they also say that it's highly pigmented. It's like, which is it? They have a few use cases, but not as flexible of a use case situation as I would hope for from them, because there are such 
better formulas that do this and other things as well that are less expensive or, you know, on par price wise, I would say that the Bosma, you know, if you are in love with either of these colors that are sort of the like pinky colors, they're a little bit more easy to find in other lines, go for like the Bosma or the Patrick Ta or anything like that. I don't think that these are like anything to necessarily write home about from the standpoint of the combination of the color and the formula. If the color really entices you on the Pomelo, go with Coquette from Westman Atelier. It's so good. But it's really hard for me to say like, yeah, that's a wholesale pass because this color is just so weird and good. <laughs> It's really good. It's just a great shade. Not to say that this doesn't exist elsewhere, but I don't own a cream in this color. And in just in this case, I find this to be worth working with the maybe imperfect formula if what you really want is this color. Now, if y'all know of this color existing someplace else in a cream formula, please let a girl know. I would love to buy it and compare it for like a sequel to this video, but I have to make an exception to the fact that like this isn't my favorite formula just for the fact that I really like this color and I think it's really uncommon and that excites me. Final thoughts on the Lawless? You know, it's a very similar sentiment in the sense that I feel like two of these shades are kind of duplicative. When I got Rosebud and Angel next to each other, and yeah, if this is my first video you're watching, I am a total color theory nerd. I could sit here all day and tell you the actual differences between those two shades. They are different. I'm not in denial about them being different, but I think when it comes to practical application, A, they're too similar to both exist. And B, you already own this. If this is a color for you, you already own this. If you don't own a color like this, or if you just ran out of yours and you're wondering if this is a good formula, yes. If you like the Rare Beauty bronzer stick formula, I would compare this very closely to that. It's very dimethicone it's really easy to work with, but those colors are not that special to me. I am really glad that I sprung for the four that I did because it was kind of a debate for me because I think that Gumdrop and Starburst are pretty remarkable. It is the combination of the shades and the formula because Gumdrop is one of the only, if not the only, cream blush I have that's this kind of blue pink and I really like it and I think that that's very wearable for people especially with like an olive undertone I'm just gonna wipe that on my wrist because I don't know what I did with my towel by the way that towel I just always want to clarify this towel looks absolutely terrifying it's clean <laughs> I run it through the wash constantly but it's just stained like that because it's like the only one that I'm gonna ruin for what I do it just looks like it's full of crap and as we saw in the swatches Starburst is uncommonly orange it's almost a tomato color, which I personally love because anything that kind of goes in a coral direction, I'm always here for, but if you can show me something new, I'm here for that too. So this is a little bit new. And if I didn't make it clear enough in the comparisons, I do find this formula to be a lot easier to use, a lot more beginner friendly than this one. And I feel like this is unique for a reason and this is maybe unique without a reason you know, formula wise. That's why we play the game. You know, this will not be the last time that we compare a ton of blushes all against each other because I just keep accumulating them and I remain curious. Anyway, y'all, I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, please do give the video a thumbs up. I will link everything down below. If you are not yet subscribed and you made it all the way into the video, wow, go you. Please go ahead and subscribe. You know, this is what it's like here. So we'd love to have you. I'll put a video up here that I think you'll enjoy if you liked this one and I love y'all. I love you so much. I love my current patrons. I love my current followers. I love anybody who's gonna like and leave a comment and whatever. Y'all are the best. So I have the best comment section. Do not pollute it. It is a lovely space full of incredible, hilarious people who are better and funnier than me. So don't pollute it if you're new here. And um, yeah, I will hopefully see y'all in the next one. Bye. <laughs>